Hello, and welcome to Adding and Subtracting Rational Expressions. This is going to be part one. I'm going to put this in two parts because I think the video is going to get a little out of control. So part one will be uh, least common denominator, finding the least common denominator, writing fractions in terms of the least common denominator. And then part two is the actual addition and subtraction. So if you're looking only for the addition and subtraction, look for part two. Okay, here we go. In order to find the least common denominator, and I am one lazy mathematician, I'm going to call it LCD. That's a lot of letters. LCD, least common denominator for rational expressions. First of all, we're going to factor the denominators, only the denominators. Second, we're going to take the highest power of each factor for the LCD. Third step, leave in factored form or multiply the factors together. And you know, if you've watched any of my other videos, I'm going to leave it in factored form. Let's start there. Let's start with a find. Uh, just, there we go. Find the LCD. So I'm looking at 6x squared, and that is 2 times 3xx. And I should leave it as x squared, but I'm going to put it as uh, Yeah, I just saw what my uh, next term was. I'm going to leave it as x squared. Take your other denominator, 5x to the fifth, factor it completely. Well, 5 is a prime factor. It is already factored. This tells me my LCD. All right, factor the denominators down. Take the highest power of each factor. So 2. There's only one 2, so I need that. 3. Uh, there's only one 3, so I need that. Uh, we'll get back to the x's. There's only one 5. I need that x to the fifth and x squared. Which one's the highest power? x to the fifth is the highest power. 2 times 3 is 6. 6 times 5 is 30. So 30x to the fifth will be the LCD. Now what we're going to do with that is we're going to rewrite our fractions in terms of the LCD. So first we found it. All right, find the least common denominator. And then we're going to determine what factors of the LCD of the fraction's denominator is missing. Multiply uh, the numerator and denominator by the missing factors. Okay, so, uh, excuse me, Tuesday, what, what was that? 5 over 6x squared. I need to figure out what goes here if I want 30x to the fifth. Okay, what, what's my numerator? Well, what did I, okay, so uh, find the least common denominator, 30x to the fifth. Determine what factors of the LCD the fraction's denominator is missing. So what do I multiply 6 by to get 30? Well, that's 5. What do I multiply x squared by to get x to the fifth? Well, I need three more of them. So we're going to multiply both the numerator and denominator by that value because I have to multiply the denominator to get the common denominator, I have to multiply the numerator to keep it the same fraction. So 25x cubed is my new numerator for that fraction. 4 over 5x to the fifth. I want to figure out what this is if I have 30x to the fifth. And again, I will multiply. It looks like my denominator gets multiplied by 6. So my numerator gets multiplied by 6, and 6 times 4 is 24. So I've taken my fractions, 5 over 6x squared and 4 over 5x to the fifth, and I've rewritten them so that they have the same denominator. And we have to have the same denominator in order to add or subtract fractions. And that's why we generally teach multiplication and division first, because it's easier. We don't have to have uh, the same denominator. All right, so we've rewritten each fraction appropriately and take that box off because it is misleading all right so in black i'll have the new denominator in blue we're going to write these fractions in terms of the new denominator here we go in black i look only at the denominators uh, 12 is 3 times 4, but that 4 is not perfectly factored. That's 3 times 2 squared, m squared, n. 
10 M N squared. My N's and H's look a lot alike, but I'll never use them in the same problem, hopefully. 10 is two times five M N squared. And so our least common denominator will be looking at our completely factored versions. I don't want to use the four, I want to use the two squared. So they have common factors. So I go down all the way to my prime factors. Maybe you remember factor trees. This is where they come in handy. And that's why I wrote two squared. All right, so I need each unique factor. I need this three. I need this two. Uh, it happens twice here, it happens once here. Twice is the most number of times that it happens. And I need my five. So I take care of all my numbers first. I have to have a three, I have to have two twos. Uh, that's only one two, so that's taken up in my two twos, and the five. Now, how many m's? I need two m's and two n's, right? What's the most number of m's in any single denominator? Two. What's the most number of n's in any single denominator? Two. So we'll rewrite this as, let's see, two squared is four. Four times five is 20. 20 times three is 60. So now we'll want to rewrite 8p over 12m squared, and we're not simplifying. We want to rewrite that so that our denominator is 60m squared n squared. And we want to take our second fraction, 3 over 10m n squared, and we want to rewrite that as 60 m squared n squared. All right, how do we do that? Well, let's multiply. This uh, first one is top fraction, 8p over 12m n, uh, m squared n. Remember, we focus on the denominator and then do the same to the numerator. So what do I multiply 12 by to get 60? Well, here's my 12. I multiplied it by 5. The m's are good, and I need an n. So I'm going to multiply 5n times 8p, and I'll get 40np. Don't make it any more challenging than that. We just need to figure out what to multiply 10mn squared by to get 60m squared n. Well, 10, I multiply 6 to get 60. I have two n's already, so I'm missing my m. So when I multiply... 3 times 6m, I'll get 18m. And I know, I know, especially if you just watched my past videos, my uh, recent videos, you really want to cancel those, but that's not the point of this particular skill. All right. Find the least common denominator. Uh, this first denominator is a minus 5. Uh, okay. The second denominator is a plus 7. My least common denominator has to have an a minus 5, has to have an a plus 7. And this is what a lot of ours are going to look like. So there's not a lot of factoring going on. We just have to find our least common denominator. So a plus 2 over a minus 5, and a minus 3 over a plus 7. What do I multiply? a minus 5 by to get a minus 5 times a plus 7? Well, it looks like I'm just multiplying by an a plus 7. And if it helps, put it in parentheses. If you like to see those parentheses, write them down. Absolutely. a plus 7 times a minus 2. Now remember, we took a small fraction and made it bigger. That's the exact opposite of what we've been doing in the two previous videos. So if you're tempted to cancel these, first of all, it's a great temptation, but resist it because we need this denominator so we can't make it smaller. We can't cancel. we got to leave it like that. All right. Now, what do I need to multiply a plus 7 by to get my least common denominator? It looks like I should probably multiply that by an a minus 5. And if it helps you, put parentheses here too. That's fine. Absolutely correct. 
So this is now a minus 5 times a minus 3. Sometimes as I'm doing work, I will rewrite these as a plus 7 over, uh, times a minus 2 all over the LCD. As long as I have it identified here, I use it in my work so I'm not tempted to cancel. So that might be something that helps you out a little bit um, as we get to the second part of this, uh, this particular set of lecture notes. All right, so we actually have something we have to do. We have to factor completely, right? We have to completely factor our denominator. To multiply to get x squared, we're going to have x times x. To multiply to get a positive 25, you're going to have the same sign. If the 10 is positive, they're both positive. Multiply to be 25, add to be 10, we have a pair of 5s. Second denominator, x squared plus 2x minus 15. In order to multiply and get x squared, we'll have x times x. To multiply to get a negative 15, one will be positive, one will be negative. This tells us our bigger one is positive, and it's larger by 2. So what are two things that multiply to be 15? I'm thinking 3 and 5, right? I always try to avoid the obvious 1 and 15. 3 and 5. Well, they're different by 2, so let's make the 5 positive and the 3 negative so we can get what we need. The least common denominator. <clears throat> Excuse me. If we look at all of our factors here, we have an x plus 5 and we have an x minus 3. But check it out. This first uh, denominator has two x plus 5s. We have to take each factor the greatest number of times it appears in a single denominator. So that has to be an x plus 5 squared because it happens twice in this denominator. It has to happen twice in the LCD. This one time, no big deal, it's taken up in there. But this twice has to happen there. So I'm glad I left some room here. I'm going to write these over on the side. Nothing like uh, starting to close caption your videos to realize that your pronunciation is not really on point. I'm working on that uh, extremely slowly because I forget until I say things like gonna. Uh, okay, so if I take my first fraction, 2x plus 5 over the factored version, x plus 5 times x plus 5, what is this denominator missing to make the least common denominator. It looks like it's missing the x minus 3. I've noticed I've started writing downhill. Uh, I have a, a book on handwriting analysis and that tells me that um, I'm in a negative mood, but it's not a negative mood. What it really is is I'm tired and hungry. Multiply. And we're going to leave it right there. That's it. That's all we need to do to it. Let's take our second fraction, 3x minus 4 over, and then the factored version, x plus 5 times x minus 3. I want this denominator to have x plus 5 twice, and that x minus 3. So it looks like I'm missing an x plus 5. So when I multiply x plus 5 times that numerator, I'll have x plus 5 times 3x minus 4. All right, so this is just going back on the whole idea of canceling uh, or simplifying rational expressions that we looked at two videos ago. Now I'm going to stop this video here. This is part one. If you really want to know how to add and subtract, watch part two. Thanks for listening.